Hey, today I'm doing a little video that was uh, requested. So I'm going to be going over how I make dyes. So this is essentially what my drawing is. I'm not going to show the actual engineer drawing from the customer because I could probably get me in trouble. But this is what I need to bend. And I've done a couple of these before where I'll bend these four different points individually in the break. But with these, it's actually a couple bends here, and then this right here, 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 and here, and then a couple more bends here. And this entire piece is about 16 feet long. So to do these four bends, it becomes a little tricky because I can't use the back gauge on the brake because it only goes to 22 inches and like these ones are like eight feet in. So it just doesn't work out. I have to mark every bend out individually. And when I'm close to the middle, I'll have like a flat piece basically, like after these four bends, it's flat. And then if I put that bend, half this flat bar would be coming down on an angle like that. And when I have to flip it over to do the next bend, it just wants to flop over and it's just kind of hard to control and it's just really annoying and that's why I decided to make a die for this job so anyway this is what I want to bend a lot of the time I am doing things just kind of drawing it out on paper but lately I've been doing AutoCAD I got a computer at work now so for something like this I can draw it out and I'll draw out this flat bar here. So this is essentially the piece of flat bar. I have it 3 16 of an inch thick and drawn out in AutoCAD to the right dimensions. So when I make a die, basically what I want to do is have a punch that's the top of this and just following that top line and the die you want to have following the bottom line which I've already done this and they look like this. And I'll go over a couple of the parts of this here. So if I put this in here, it'll line up with everything. And out here, I had to extend this and here, I put this radius I probably shouldn't have, or I should have went to a smaller radius or extended it out more. And I'll show you why in a second here. Uh, the other things you'll notice, there's a couple little notches here. Those I put for weld because I wanted to cut this out of half inch hard ox plate. And I need to bend flat bar that is two inches wide so I was going to stack five of those together to make a two and a half inch wide punch and the reason I do that is because I'm cutting these out on the water jet and if you cut a really thick piece it will have a bit of a kerf where if you cut out a bunch of thinner pieces that kerf isn't as much of a concern and it'll end up being a more consistent size the whole width it won't have a taper on one side and then up here I have that that's a half inch wide little tongue and that will clamp into the dies tool holder and then down here that is just a center so that if I have the center of my bends like marked out I can center it with that little notch and bend it so I'll put that one there and I'll grab the die now. So here's the die. And one thing you'll notice here and here I don't have any sort of radius. And here and here there's a little radius. And then it's kind of the opposite on this one. I have a radius here and no radius here. That's because the bend should have a bit of a radius. And the top side, it doesn't need that radius. So having, having it without a radius just gives it a little bit of clearance. 
because like, on something like this, all the pressure is going to be putting on right here. And then along here, because the flat bar is going to have a curve in it before it squishes it down between this face and this face. So from here, I could do something like that and have that gone and this die would still function the same but I have it the other way just for it would be a bit more strong or yeah it'd be stronger having it this way so I leave it like that and the radius also helps with when this bends this flat bar actually has to get pulled into the die and helps when it drags along a smoother surface it doesn't have as much galling and then uh, the other thing to note here this notch I have there is to fit over our like four-sided die the reason I have it off-centered is because the one die that I use the most would be centered right here when this block is sitting on it. So I can have it centered in that die and use this die at the same time. And I made the height of these the same where when this one's bottomed in this die, my regular punch and die I use would be bottomed out too. So they have the both have the same zero and just makes everything work out really nice. Put a bit of thought into this one. So I'll show you the actual die now. So here is the punch and die. Like I said, along there, it's welded. That's all that's holding these ones together other than this one having the weld on this bolt, or not, I guess, so that I can tighten this against the die just so it doesn't move around on me. And I can put that there. And you can see I ground off this surface. I kind of polished these edges where that flat bar will have to slip in. Same as on this one. These edges are polished and these ones. And this is where I was saying I shouldn't have put this big radius because this side actually has to bend this flat bar down after because it would be coming up straight until this well between these as they're coming down the flat bar would be straight until it gets down to the point where this one touches the flat bar in which or actually the flat bar would be bending along that one until it touches here and then it would start putting a bend right there, folding that angle. And this wasn't out low enough to actually get it flat after, so I had to put a bit of weld there and right here, grind it down until the, the bends ended up straight along here and here. Because at first, these were coming up on an angle because this bend wasn't getting bent enough. But stuff like that, it's kind of trial and error. I'm not professional at this. It's a thing I like doing, but yeah. So, like I say, this will just sit on the die, clamp on there. And you can see where it's ground off. You can see the water jet cut there, but it's ground off on the right side of each of these. But the top or the left side would have been the top for cutting with the water jet so the curve would have been angled up which is why when I was grinding these the left side of each of these is still showing just a little bit and that's why I cut them as a bunch of individual pieces because if this whole thing had that little angle of curve this end would have been way out dimensionally whereas cutting out a bunch of half inch pieces it ends up a lot closer and it's a lot easier to manage 
little pieces of half inch plate to get it onto the water jet instead of putting like a two and a half inch thick piece of hard ox on there. And the reason I went with hard ox is because, well, it's hard and I'm just bending mild steel in these. So this hard ox should last for thousands of bends, which I don't think I'll ever do thousands of bends in it, but I have a current order of 144 pieces of flat bar. It's 72 pairs. And yeah, 144 with four bends per flat bar. That ends up being close to 600 bends, but uh, yeah. A lot of bends to do, so this will help me out a lot. So this is what they look like set up in the die, or in the brake, sorry. And as you can see, it is centered over this die. And it bottoms out the same time that this punch bottoms out in that die. So it makes it so I can do the first two bends in this die, punch and die, and then do those middle bends with these ones. And I'll do a couple test bends here. So I'll do this piece here, and it is starting at 59 and 3 sixteenths. So I'll write that down. And do four bends. is curved until it squishes between the flat spot like along here it'll curve and then it gets squished between those when they bottom out see there's the gap underneath squishes and one more So after these four bends, I'm now at 57 and 3 eighths. Uh, 57 and 3 eighths. So 59 3 16 so 57 and 3 8 uh, that would be inch and 13 16 difference, I believe. So, 1 and, yeah, 1 and 13 16 because I don't know how to write. So since it lost one and 13 sixteenths, that's how much longer I'll have to cut the uh, actual pieces that I'm doing compared to what the end length is supposed to end up as to be able to do these four bends and have it end up the right size. And with, it took me a little while of grinding that weld down that I put here just to get it so that it ends up straight because it's very easy to have each one where it's just like a fraction of a degree off and then after you do four it's kind of curved where this one even now it does curve to the right a little bit but not by a lot and now as far as dimensions go I'm supposed to have 5.63 so about 5 and 5 eighths and 2.16 which is close to 2 and 3 sixteenths. So that's center of bend to center of bend so 
probably not going to focus here, but I'm at about 12 there, and then about 14 and an eighth, so close. And then uh, here, I'll actually go off the end of the tape, and pretty pretty darn close to five and five eighths. So dimension wise, I'm pretty good. And it's supposed to be a one inch rise, which this one's hard to measure with one hand. So it's supposed to be a one inch rise and maybe 20 thou over. Not quite, I don't think. So pretty close. So I'm out by a hair, but it'll be a lot closer and more consistent than if I did them all individually, especially just marking them all out with a paint marker. So that's how I made this die. And yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. It's one of the things that like, like I say, I'm not a professional with this. I'm just a welder and I like doing this stuff, but uh, yeah, they're, they're kind of a fun little thing, a little brain teaser, I guess. So yeah, if you have any questions, let me know, and thanks for watching.